anointing of the sick, which can be celebrated in need on uh, Good Friday. The, you'll notice that the altar remains bare after having been stripped during yesterday's Mass of the Lord's Supper. There are no candles or cross. And later on in the liturgy, when we enter the rite, when Holy Communion is received, the altar will be prepared with candles, since our Lord will be present in that moment in the Blessed Sacrament. The Holy Father Pope Francis gradually makes his way toward the main altar. The Holy Father and the celebrants wear red vestments for today's liturgy, and the procession is in silence, and the ministers prostrate themselves after reveren reverencing the altar. Afterwards, the liturgy of the Word will follow. Pope Francis bows before the altar and makes his way toward his chair, which is set up on the side of the basilica. And we welcome everyone to this live broadcast of the Passion of Our Lord. It is presided over by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica. <coughs> so we welcome all those, especially those joining us through Mondo Visione. Pope Francis pronounces the opening prayer in Latin. And those present take their seats. Dal libro del profeta Isaia Ecco, il mio servo avrà successo Sarà First onorato, reading. esaltato e innalzato grandemente Come molti si stupirono See, di lui Tanto era sfigurato per essere d'uomo il suo aspetto E diversa la sua forma da quella dei figli dell'uomo Così so si meraviglieranno di lui molte nazioni. No I re davanti a lui so si chiuderanno la bocca. Poiché vedranno un fatto mai a essi raccontato e comprenderanno ciò che mai told, avevano udito. Chi avrebbe before? creduto al nostro annuncio? A chi sarebbe stato manifestato il braccio del Signore? E' cresciuto come un virgulto davanti a lui Like e come una radice in terra arida. In us, like non ha apparenza ground, né bellezza per attirare i nostri sguardi. Majesty, no splendore him, per poterci no piacere. Eyes, disprezzato e reietto dagli uomini. Uomo dei dolori che ben conosce il patire. Come uno davanti al quale ci si copre la faccia. Era disprezzato e non ne avevamo alcuna stima. No Eppure egli si è caricato delle nostre sofferenze, si è accostato i nostri dolori, e noi lo giudicavamo castigato, per costo But del we, Dio e un dato. Egli è stato trafitto per le nostre colpe, schiacciato per le nostre iniquità. Yet, 
He was pierced Il castigo che ci dà salvezza si è battuto su di Lui. Per le sue sins. piaghe noi siamo stati guariti. On him lies noi tutti a eravamo sperduti come un gregge. Ognuno di noi seguiva la sua strada. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way. And the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse. Like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Fu eliminato dalla yes. terra dei viventi. He was torn away from the land per of the la living. colpa del mio popolo fu For our faults morte. struck down in death. Gli si diede sepoltura con gli empi. They gave him a grave with the wicked. Tumulo. A tomb Sebbene with the rich. non avesse commesso violenza, Though he had done no wrong, nella sua and bocca. had no, been no perjury Ma in his Signore mouth. Ma al Signore è piaciuto prostrarlo con dolori. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many. Taking their faults on himself. Hence, I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty, for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner, while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. Cantor arrives for the responsorial psalm, sung meaning, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Padre, nelle tue mani consegno il mio spirito. Signore, mi sono rifugiato, mai sarò deluso. Difendimi per la tua giustizia. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. Rifiuto dei miei nemici e persino dei miei vicini, il terrore dei miei conoscenti. In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors and of fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead man, forgotten in men's hearts, like a thing thrown away. Ma io confido in te, Signore, dico... But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Tuo 
servo fa splendere il tuo volto, salvami per la tua misericordia. Siate forti, Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord. The second reading will be read in English. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven. We must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident, then, in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in the need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Now the choir will sing the gradual. There's a brief translation. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names.
And now we will read the Gospel from the Passion of Christ according to John. Passione di nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, secondo mio annem. In illo tempore, egressus est Iesus cum discipulis suis, tras torrentem cedro. Ubi era tortus, in quem introibit ipse, et discipuli teius. Sciebat autem et iudas, qui tradebat eum locum. Qui a frequenter Iesus convenerat illuc, cum discipulis suis. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Cedron Valley. There was a garden there, and he went into it with his disciples. Judas, the traitor, knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there, and he brought the cohort, cohort cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Abierunt retror sum, et ceciderunt in terra. Iterum ergo eos interrogavit. Quem querit his? Illi autem dixerunt. Now, Judas, the traitor, was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. I have told you that I am he, replied Jesus. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Erat aut en nomen servo malcus. Dixit ergo Iesus Petro. Mite gladium in vaginam. Calicem quem dedit mici pater. Non vivam illum. Simon Peter, who carried the sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, 
cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given to me? Expedit unum omine mori pro populo. The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Exhibit ergo discipulis alius, qui erat notus pontifici, et dixit ostiarie, et introduxit Petrum. Dicit ergo Petro ancilla ostiaria. Num quid et tu ex discipulis es hominis istius? Dicit ille, non sum. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire, and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. Et in oculto locutus sum nici, quid me interrogas? Interroga eos, qui audierunt quid locutus sum ipsis? Et ce hisciunt, quid exerim ego? The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret. But why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. Testimonium At these words, one of the guards, standing by Jesus, gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I have said, point it out. But if there is no offense in it, why do you strike me? Inanus sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Negavit ille et dixit, non 
sum. Dici tu nos ex servis pontificis, coniatus eius cuius abscidit Petrus auriculam. Non ego te vidi in orto cum illo, iterum ergo negavit Petrus, et statim gallus cantavit. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not one of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. Exhibit ergo Pilatos adeos foras et dicit. Quam accusationem affectis, adversos hominem hunc, responderunt et ixerunt ei. Dixit ergo eis Pilatus. Acipite eum vos, et secundum legem vestram judicate eum. Dixerunt ei iudei. Ut sermo Iesus impleretur quem dixit, significans quam eset morte moriturus. Introhivit ergo iterum in praetorium Pilatus. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we sh should not be handling, handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The, Jew the Jews answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. Respondit Jesus. Regnum meum non est de mundo hoc. Si ex hoc mundo eset regnum meum. Ministri mei der certarent, ut non trader er iudes. No. Dixit aquet Pilatus. Ergo access to. Respondit Jesus. To dicis. We are exum. Ego in hoc natus. So. Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him. 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent my being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. So you are a kingdom, said Pilate. It is you who say it, answered Jesus. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Truth, said Pilate, what is that? And with that, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him, but according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, they said, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Et milites plectentes coronam de spinis, in posuerum capiti eius. Et veste purpurea circum dederum teum. Et veniebant ad deum, et dicebant. Et dabante i alapas, et exiti terum Pilatus fora. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head, and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Exit ergo Jesus foras, porteam spinam coronam, et purpureum vestimentum, et dicit eis, ecce homo, cum ergo vidis enteum pontifices et ministri, Clama verunt dicentes. Dicite is Pilatus, Acipite um vos, et crucifigite, ego enim non invenio vineo causam. Responderum te iudei,
Pilate Pilate came outside and again sermone, and said to them, Look, I'm going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. We have a law, the Jews replied, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Et potestatem abeo crucifigerete. Respondit Jesus. Non haberes potestatem adversum meulam. Nisi tibi eset datum de super. Propteream. We tried it, Metibi, Maius peccatum habet. When Pilate heard them saying this, his fears increased. Re entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. You would have no power over me, replied Jesus, if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. Pilatus ergo, cum maudisse tot sermones, adduxit foras Iesum, et sedit pro tribunali, in locum qui dicit urlitos trotos, ebraice autem gabbata. Erat autem parasceve pasche, Ora serat quasi sexta, et dicit iodeis. Ece rex veste, clama verunt ergo illi. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free, but the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement. In Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover, preparation day, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, said Pilate to the Jews. Take him away, take him away, they said. Crucify him. Do you want me to crucify your king, said Pilate. The chief priest answered, We have no king except Caesar. So in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Qui dicitur calvarie locum, qui ebraice dicitur Golgotha, o bieum crocifixerus, et cum eo alios duos incetint, medio autem Iesum. Scripsit autem et titulum Pilatus, et posuit super crucem. 
Eratautem scriptu, Jesus Nazarenus rex iudeorum. Uncergo titulum multilegerunt iudeorum, qui aprope civitatem erat locus, ubi crucifixus est Iesus. Et erat scriptum ebraice, latine, grece. Dicebant ergo Pilato pontifices iudeorum, Respondit Pilatus, Quod scripsi, scripsi, Milites ergo, cum crucifixis ent Iesum, Acceperunt vestimenta eius, Et fecerum quatuor partes, Unicuique militis partem, Et tunicam. Erat autem tunicam inconsutilis, de super contexta per They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or, as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews, because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the, Jews, so the Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, You should not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, Et I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to him. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way the words of Scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Ecce <laughs> Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment the disciple made a place for her in his home. Spongiam ergo plena maceto, isopo circumponentes, obtulerunt ori eius. Cum ergo accepisset acetum, 
After this, Jesus knew that everything had been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in the vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. All the congregation kneels and pauses to reflect on the death of our Lord. Rector says to stand up, and the reading continues. Yodai ergo quoniam parasheverat, ut non remanerent in cruce corpora sabato, erant enim magnus dies illio sabati. Roga verunt Pilatum, ut frangerentur neorum cruram tollerentur. Venerunt ergo milites, et primi quidem fregerunt crura, et alterius qui crucifixus est cum eo. Ad Iesum autem cum venissent, ot viderunt eum iam mortum, non frangeret ureius crura, sed unus militum lance alatus eius aperuit, et continuo exivit sanguis et aqua. Et qui vidit testimonium peribuit, et verum est eius testimonium. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance. And immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth. And he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, Scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. et tulit corpus Venit autem et Nicodemus, qui venerat ad Deum nocte primum, ferens mixturam mire metalea quasi libras centum. Ace per un tergo corpus Iesu, Et liga verunt illu drinte is cum aromatibus. Who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time. And he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloth, following the Jewish burial custom. 
at the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried, since it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was near at hand. They laid Jesus there. Verbum Domini And now following the reading of the Gospel, the preacher of the papal household will give, pronounce the homily. Cardinal Raniero Cantalamesa, he's a Capuchin friar, he makes his way toward the Ambo. The theme of his sermon is, Pilate said to him, what is truth? Nel racconto della Passione, l'Evangelista Giovanni dà un'importanza particolare al dialogo di Gesù con Pilato. Ed è su di esso che vogliamo riflettere qualche minuto prima di proseguire con la nostra liturgia. In his account of the Tutto Passion, inizia con la domanda the Evangelist di Pilato, John gives particular importance to the dialogue Giudei? of Jesus <laughs> with Pilate. Gesù vuole and far it is on this that we want to reflect for a few moments before proceeding further with our liturgy. It all begins with Pilate's question, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus wants to make Pilate understand that the question is far more serious than he thinks, and that it has meaning only if he does not simply repeat an accusation from others. Un regno che non è di questo Therefore, mondo. he asks in turn, do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Se si vuole parlare di religione, lui non vuole entrare in questo genere di questioni. He tries to lead Pilate to a Domanda higher plane. He speaks to him of his kingdom, Dunque, tu sei the kingdom re? that is not of this world. E Gesù risponde, Pilate understands tu only one Io thing. Sono re that it is not a question of a political kingdom. If the accused wants to talk about religion, he doesn't want to get into these kinds of problems. He therefore asks, with, with a touch of irony, that you are a king. Jesus replied, you say that I am a king. By claiming to be king, Jesus exposes himself to the danger of death. But instead of clearing himself by denying it, he strongly affirms it. He reveals his superior origins to him. I came into the world. He says, therefore, mysteriously, that he existed before his earthly life. He comes from another world. He came to earth to be a witness to the truth. Jesus treats Pilate as a soul who needs life and truth, and not as a judge. He is interested in the destiny of the man, Pilate, more than in his own destiny. With his appeal to receive the truth, he wants to prompt him to come to his senses, to look at things with different eyes, to place himself above the momentary dispute with the Jews. Il mistero che intravede nelle parole di Gesù gli fa paura. The Roman procurator understands Jesus' invitation to him, but he is skeptical and indifferent about this kind of higher speculation. The mystery he glimpses in Jesus' words frightens him, and he prefers to end the conversation, muttering to himself, what is truth, he leaves the praetorium. Anche oggi, come in passato, l'uomo non cessa di domandarsi che cos'è la verità. What a relevant page from the Gospel for today. Even today, as in the past, man asks himself, what is truth? But as Pilate did, 
He casually turns his back on the one who said, I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Ho seguito innumerevoli dibattiti su religione e scienza, su fede e ateismo. Through the internet, I have followed countless debates on religion and science and on faith and atheism. One thing has struck me. Hours and hours of dialogue without ever mentioning the name of Jesus. And if the believing party sometimes dares to mention his name and his resurrection from the dead, they immediately tried to close the discussion as an irrelevant digression. Everything happens etsi Christus non dare. As if the world there, as if in the world there had never been a man called Jesus Christ. La parola Dio diventa un contenitore vuoto che ognuno può riempire a suo piacimento. The word God becomes an empty vessel, an empty vessel for anyone to fill at will. But it is precisely for this reason that God took care to give content to his name. The word became flesh. Truth became flesh. Hence the staunch effort to leave Jesus out of the discourse on God. Egli toglie all'orgoglio umano ogni pretesto per decidere lui che cos'è Dio. What God should be like. Ah, certo, Gesù di Nazareth si obietta, ma se qualcuno dubita perfino che sia esistito. Oh, sure, Un modo scrittore inglese del secolo scorso, conosciuto al gran pubblico per essere l'autore del ciclo di romanzi e di film a well-known English writer of the last century, known to the general public for being the author of, of the series of novels, novels that later became films, The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, in a letter, gave this answer to his son, who mentioned the same objection to him. It takes a fantastic will to unbelieve o che non abbia detto lui le parole che gli vengono attribuite. Tanto esse sono impossibili a inventarsi da nessun altro essere al mondo. Come prima che Abramo fosse io sono, e chi vede me vede il Padre. He that hath seen me hath seen the L'unica alternativa alla verità del Cristo, aggiungeva lo scrittore, è che si tratti di un caso di demente megalomania e di una frode gigantesca. The only alternative to the truth of Christ, adds the writer, però, is that he is a fraud, and the Gospels garble the counts of demented megalomania. Could such a case, however, withstand 20 centuries of relentless historical and philosophical criticism and produce the fruits it has produced? Today we go beyond Pilate's skepticism. There are those who think that we should not even ask the question, what is truth? Because the truth simply does not exist. Everything Pensare diversamente è intollerabile certain. presunzione. Thinking otherwise is non c'è più spazio per le grandi narrazioni no sul mondo e sulla realtà, comprese quelle su Dio e su Cristo. Fratelli e sorelle atei, agnostici o ancora in ricerca, se ce n'è qualcuno in ascolto, Dear brother and sister non è un povero predicatore come me che ha pronunciato le parole che ora sto per dirvi. The words I'm about to address è uno to che molti di voi ammirano, di cui preacher, scrivono like e di cui forse si considerano anche discepoli e continuatori. Sir Kierkegaard, and of whom perhaps iniziatore della corrente filosofica Soren Kierkegaard, Dice, the founder of existential si philosophy. Parla tanto di umane, so much is said, he writes, about 
human suffering and poverty. Ma sprecata è solamente so la vita di quell'uomo che mai si rese conto perché non ebbe mai who, nel senso più profondo l'impressione che esiste un Dio e che egli, proprio lui, il suo io, sta davanti a questo Dio. He himself, his own self, stands in this God's presence. Si dice c'è troppa ingiustizia e troppa sofferenza nel mondo per credere in Dio. È vero. Ma pensiamo a quanto più assurdo e intollerabile diventa il male che ci circonda senza la fede in un trionfo finale della verità e del bene. La risurrezione di Gesù dai morti che celebreremo fra due giorni è la promessa e la garanzia che quel trionfo ci sarà perché è già cominciato con Lui. Se avessi il coraggio dell'Apostolo Paolo dovrei gridare anch'io vi scongiuro lasciatevi riconciliare con Dio. If I had the courage of St. Paul, at this point, I too would have to shout, We implore you on behalf of Christ, non uscite da questo mondo come Pilato uscì dal pretorio con quella domanda in sospeso, che cos'è la verità? Do not leave this world as Pilate left the pretorium with the unanswered question, si tratta di sapere se abbiamo vissuto per qualcosa, It is the question of knowing whether we live for something or in vain. Il dialogo di Gesù con Pilato offre però l'occasione anche per un'altra riflessione. However, Jesus' dialogue with Pilate also offers the occasion for another re- reflection. Address this non time di fuori. to us believers and La tua gente, people of the church, sacerdoti ti hanno not to those outside. Gens Your people and the chief priests have handed you over to me, me, says Pilate. Gli uomini della tua chiesa, i tuoi sacerdoti ti hanno abbandonato. Hanno squalificato il tuo Gens nome con orrendi misfatti. E non dovremmo ancora credere in te. People of your church, your priests have abandoned you. Anche a questa They terribile obiezione vorrei rispondere con le parole che lo stesso scrittore ricordato diceva, scriveva a suo figlio. Also, to this terrible objection, I would like to respond with the words of Tolkien addressed to Il nostro amore son. potrà essere raffreddato e la nostra volontà scalfita dallo spettacolo delle deficienze della follia and our will eroded by the e dei peccati of della Chiesa e dei suoi ministri. Ma non credo che ministers. chi ha creduto davvero una volta abbandona la fede per queste ragioni. Goes back over Meno the line for these reasons, least of all anyone with any historical knowledge. It is convenient because it tends to turn our colpe, eyes away from ourselves and our own faults to find a scapegoat. Penso di I think I am as sensitive as you or any other Christian Tolkien, Tolkien e come lo è ogni son. To the scandals, Ho sofferto molto nella mia vita a causa di preti ignoranti, stanchi, deboli e a volte anche I have suffered grievously in my life from stupid, tired, Un risultato del genere del resto c'era da aspettarsi. Cominciò prima della Pasqua, con il tradimento di Giuda, il rinnegamento di Pietro, la fuga degli Apostoli. Such a poor result was moreover to be expected. It began before the first Easter with the betrayal of Judas, the denial of Simon Peter, the flight of the apostles. Cried then? Yes, Tolkien recommended to his son. But for Jesus, for what he must endure, the poor for us. Cry, we must add today, for the victims and the victims and with the victims of our sins. Quest'anno celebriamo la Pasqua non al suono gioioso di campane, ma con il rumore sinistro di bombe ed esplosioni devastanti che avvengono a non lontano da noi. Ricordiamo quello che rispose un giorno Gesù alla notizia del bells, sangue fatto scorrere da Pilato e del crollo della torre di Sion. 
se non vi convertirete per Let us recall how Jesus responded modo. one day to the news of blood shed by Galileans. Se non cambiate le vostre lance in falci, le vostre and spade in aratri, i vostri missili in fabbriche e case, perirete tutti allo stesso modo. If you do not beat your swords into plowshares, your spears into pruning hooks, and your missiles into factories and homes, ricordato. you will perish in the same way. Gli assetti del mondo possono cambiare da un giorno all'altro. Tutto passa. One thing of Tutto which invecchia. these events have suddenly reminded Tutto, us. Tutto, non solo la beata gioventù, The structures of the world can change from one day to another. C'è un solo everything modo di passes, sottrarsi alla corrente del ages, tempo che trascina tutto dietro di sé. Youth, Passare a ciò che non passa. Mettere i piedi sulla terraferma. Pass Pasqua to significa passaggio. Does not pass. Facciamo to tutti quest'anno una vera Pasqua, venerabili padri, fratelli e sorelle. Easter, Passover, means passage. Passiamo a colui che non passa. Passiamo ora Venerable con il cuore. Fathers, brothers and sisters, Prima let us pass on to the one who cuore. does not pass. Let us pass on now with our heart, before passing on one day with our body. And that concludes the homily offered by Cardinal Raniero Cantalamessa, the preacher of the papal household. As the congregation pauses to reflect on his words, I'll offer a small summary of his homily. Cardinal Cantalamessa focused on the dialogue of Jesus with Pilate from the Gospel of John. He explained that through that dialogue, which began with Pilate's question, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus sought and tried to lead Pilate to a higher plane to see if he does not simply repeat an accusation from others. And so Jesus asks him again, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Jesus uh, speaks to Pilate of his kingdom, which is not of this world, and he reaffirms his superior origins, his heavenly origins, saying, I came into the world to be the witness to the truth, indicating that he did exist before his earthly life. In this dialogue, explained Cardinal Cantalamesa, Jesus treats Pilate as a soul who needs light and truth, and is, demonstrates interest in the, the destiny of the man, Pilate, more than in his own destiny, which would lead to the cross. Thus, with his appeal for the truth, Jesus wants to prompt Pilate to come to his senses, to look at things with different eyes, and to place himself above the momentary dispute with the Jews. Cardinal Cantalamesa notes, everything passes in this world, and, and we're reminded of that as through the terrible war in, in Europe, in Ukraine. But he reminds, urges everyone to pass from the things that do pass to the one who never passes, unto Jesus. Oremus dilectissimi nobis pro ecclesia sancta dei. Ute am Deus et Dominus noster, pacificare, adunare et custodire dignetur, toto orbe terrarum. Det que nobis quietam et tranquillam vitam de gentibus, glorificare Deum Patrem omnipotentem. And now we move into the solemn intercessions for Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace. 
to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. For praise, Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name to Christ our Lord. For the Pope, let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Omnipotent Sempiterne Deus, Cuius Judicio Universa Fundantur, Respice Almighty and ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your unending kindness protect me, your unworthy servant, that the Christian people entrusted to my pastoral care may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Oremus et pro omnibus episcopis. Presbyteris, diaconis, Let us ecclesiae, pray also for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, plebe, and for the whole of the faithful people. Omnipotent Sapitana Deus, Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Oremus et procade cumenis nostris, ut Deus et Dominus noster, ad aperiat aures Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all for their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Omnipotent Sipiana Deus, que Christian tu an nova semper prole fecundas. Almighty ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offer offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Ut Deus et Dominus noster, Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Omnipotent Sempiterna Deus, qui dispersa congregas et congregata conservas, Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Oremus et pro iudeis, ut ad quos prios lucutus est dominus Deus noster, let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them in, to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Omnipotent Sempiterne Deus, he promissionis tuas. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Omnipotence eterna Deus, fac di Cristo non confidentur, con ante sincero cuore. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Oremus et prois qui Deum non agnoscunt, ut que recta sunt sincero corde sectantes, ad ipsum Deum pervenire mere ansum. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Omnipotens et piterne Deus, Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Oremus et pro omnibus rem publica moderantibus, ut Deus et Dominus noster, mentes et cordae orum secundum voluntatem suam Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Omnipotens et piterne Deus, in cuius manus sunt dominum corda et iura populorum, respice benignus a Deus, qui nos in potestati moderantur, ut ubique terrarum populum prosperitas, pacis securitas. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hands lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us that through the world the prosperity of peoples your gift of peace may be secure. Let us pray for peoples devastated by the atrocities of war. May their tears and the blood of the fallen not be shed in vain, but hasten the dawn of an age of peace, born of the glorious wounds of Christ Jesus. Deus misericus et fortis, qui bella conteris de primisque superbus. O God, merciful and strong, who crush wars and cast down the proud, swiftly banish violence from the human race and wipe away all tears, so that we may all deserve truly to be called your children. Oremus dilectissimi nobis, Deum Patrem omnipotentem, Ut cunctis mundum purget erroribus. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, help to the sick, and salvation to the dying. In firmantibus sanitatem, at quem orientibus salutem indulgeat. Omnipotens in piterne Deus, maestorum consolatium laborantium fortitudo. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. And with that we conclude the solemn intercessions. And now move into the second 
part of the liturgy, which is the adoration of the Holy Cross. The cross is gradually brought up toward the The deacon invites us all to kneel and reflect in silence. At this point, you reflect on the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Let us stand. The deacon and the ministers bring the crucifix further up to the center of the basilica. Accompanied by two candles. The cross is moving up the center aisle during this adoration of the Holy Cross. On Good Friday, we recall the death of our Lord, especially during this passion of the Lord, this liturgy. The deacon arrives at the second station in the center of the basilica. The deacon once again invites us to kneel in adoration of the cross. We adore the cross in silence. Let us stand. The deacon and the ministers bring the cross toward the front of the basilica for the third and final station. in this adoration of the, and showing of the Holy Cross. Then the 
make their way to the front. Still accompanied by two candles. And the deacon raises the cross. Let us kneel, invites the deacon. As we kneel before the cross, considering the passion of our Lord, Let us stand, invites the deacon. The deacon then brings the cross toward Pope Francis so that the Holy Father may adore and kiss the cross. At this point, we are in adoration of the Holy Cross with the Holy Father. As the choir sings, we adore your cross, O Lord. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, because of the wood of a tree, joy has come to the whole world. And the congregation responds, May God have mercy on us and bless us. May he let his face shed its light upon us and have mercy on us. Pope Francis takes the crucifix, raises it. Everyone in the congregation is invited to kneel in adoration of the cross.
cross, which Pope Francis holds, is the it's called the miraculous crucifix. It's from the Church of San Marcello here in Rome. Everyone, the deacon takes the cross from the Pope. This crucifix of Saint Marcellus escaped a fire in 1519 unharmed and was borne in procession several times in Rome to halt the plague. It dates back to the late 14th century. And the deacon brings it to the high altar to be placed in a prominent place. As the deacon prepares the altar for the third part of this liturgy of the Passion of the Lord, this third part is the uh, reception of Holy Communion. As I mentioned earlier, there are no Eucharistic prayers. It's not a. It's not the sacrament of the Eucharist. It is. The faithful will receive. The hosts, the body of Christ, which was consecrated on at Mass on Holy Thursday. The cross of St. Marcellus was last brought to St. was brought to St. Peter's most notably during the Statio Orbis in May 2020. And Pope Francis prayed there in St. Peter's Square, an empty, raining, dark St. Peter's Square as the COVID-19 pandemic spread throughout the world. And the Pope prayed in that Statio Orbis for an end to the pandemic, which... amid the fear and novelty of that virus which is still with us. As the altar has been prepared, Pope Francis moves toward the high altar under the baldachin the Baldachin, which was designed and put together by Bernini, stands in the center, marking the place of the Holy Sacrifice in St. Peter's Basilica. The crucifix is notable in general within the Christian tradition because the Christian tradition has always employed art and beauty to impart knowledge or impart the faith and the cross and the 
doesn't have any inherent meaning, but it represents the and and leads the congregation, the faithful, into a deeper understanding of the mystery it signifies. And we pray they are fathers. Ecce aius Dei, ecce qui tolit peccata mundi, beati che accene l'agni vocati sui. Domine, non tu vinius, And the Holy Father receives communion. faithful prepare to receive Holy Communion as well according to the Holy See Press Office there are around 3,500 faithful people gathered in St. Peter's Basilica for this liturgy begins to chant the Adoramus Te Christi. We adore you, O Christ.
here here in St. Peter's Basilica during the liturgy of the Passion of the Lord as the faithful receive Holy Communion and reflect on the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross. And we who cannot be present can pray in active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We continue our prayer with the Holy Father in silence. As we pray during this Passion of the Lord, Through the gift of modern media, we are joined with the Holy Father as he prays the following, the final prayer. Oremos. Omnipotens et viterne Deus, qui nos Christi tue beate morte resurrezione reparasti, conserva in nobis opus misericordiae tue, ut tuius misteri participazione, perpetua devozione vivamos, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. And now the deacon will invite us to bow our heads to receive the Pope's apostolic blessing. Inclinate vos ad benedictionem. Super populum tuum quesumus domine, qui morti in fili tui in spe sue resurrectionus recolvit, benedictio copiosa descendat. Indulgentia veniat, consolatio tribuatur, fide santa su crescat, redemption sempiterna firmetur, per Christum Dominum nostro. Amen. With that blessing, the Pope has concluded this liturgy of the, the Passion of the Lord, and the ministers come forward, carrying the cross and the candles. As they process out of St. Peter's Basilica, This broadcast and this liturgy, excuse me, concludes without concluding. It continues on through Holy through Holy Saturday, beginning on Holy Thursday, continuing today through Good Friday, and through Holy Saturday into the evening when we will celebrate 
the Easter Vigil and conclude the Paschal Triduum. And so this broadcast is brought to an end of the celebration of the Lord's Passion, which Pope Francis has presided over in St. Peter's Basilica. I invite you all to join us again at 9 p.m. Rome time this evening when the Holy Father will preside at the Way of the Cross at the Colosseum in Rome. You can find information about the families who wrote this evening's reflections by visiting the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You will also find playback of all the Pope's liturgies, summaries of his homilies, as well as other coverage of Vatican and world news. I'm Devin Watkins, and it has been my pleasure to provide you with the commentary for this broadcast. And my apologies again for speaking in those moments of silence on behalf of our radio listeners. And on behalf of Vatican Media, I wish all of you a blessed Triduum, Laudetur Jesus Christus. Thank you.